In this tutorial, we're going to make a game where you have to pilot a ship to land on the planet. But you can't just land anywhere on the planet. You have to land on the red landing surface. And when you do, you'll get 5,000 points. Or die. So that sounds like a pretty fun game. Uh, let's get started by going to our browser. So that is clicking on the menu, then going to Internet. And we're going to use the Brave browser because we find it quicker than some of the others. So click on that. The Brave browser should open up right to the Scratch programming environment. If it doesn't, call your instructor over. Your first step is just to close down the default tutorial window that opens. Click the X there that says close. Okay, let's get some of our initial elements. Um, we're going to go to stage and then go down to the bottom where the circle is and then click on this magnifying glass so we can choose a backdrop. This will bring you to a page where you can choose the backdrop. Initially, all of the backdrops will be shown but we want to find uh, backdrops that have to do with space. So in the search box, just type in the word space. From here, we want to find a picture we can put a planet in. So I'd say galaxy or stars or nebula. Choose any one of those three. Now we have to go get the planet we're going to put in there. So go into the section with the sprite in it and click on the circle or hover above the circle in that corner and again go to the magnifying glass so we can choose a sprite. Click on that. Again we're going to be looking at all of them so a little too much to choose from so go to the search box and type the word earth. There's only one in the selection so go ahead and click on it so it's chosen. We don't need Scratchy the cat here so hover your mouth click on it um, and you'll see a little garbage can appear in the upper right then click on that. Our game requires a little red landing pad on the earth. So we're going to draw that in. And first to do that, we're going to click on costumes. So under the costumes tab, you're going to have this editing environment right here. Uh, kind of covers all this space. And what it does is it allows you to make changes to the costume you're working with. Uh, what I'm going to show you here is a way you can zoom. Uh, so hold down control on your keyboard and roll your mouse wheel and that's going to end up looking like this. So you hold down control, you roll your mouse wheel away from you, and you'll zoom in. And it's going to zoom to whatever point your mouse cursor is pointing to, so you want to point to the earth. So just zoom in so you've got a decent sized earth to work with. Do that now. Now what we want to do is draw a red landing pad. Um, we don't want it to be in the middle of the ocean, uh, so we're going to rotate the earth to put a, a nice section of land at the top and this section right here from here to here happens to be the biggest so uh, we're going to use the select tool so click on that to make sure it's the tool we're using and then click in the upper left and drag down into your lower right encasing the entire earth in that square then let go do that now please okay now that you got the whole earth selected all you have to do is find this little curved line with the two arrows on either end. Put your cursor above it, it'll turn into a little hand. And then turn your earth until you have that big section of green land at the very top. Okay, now we're going to change our tool. Get your cursor above the circle tool, click on it. Before we do anything else, we're going to uh, change this fill color. So click on the down arrow, move this slide button, all the way to the left so that the top line is at zero and move the saturation all the way to the right so that it's at 100 and if your brightness isn't already at 100 put that at 100 as well so make those changes to those three slide bars 0, 100, 100. Okay the next thing we're going to do is change the outline so click on the down arrow beside outline do exactly the same thing your slide arrow all the way to the side so that's zero saturation at 100 and brightness at 100. And then click on, on some empty space to close that square uh, dialog box. Okay, so now all we have to do now is uh, click on the circle tool and right up here at the top, uh, draw a circle. So you're gonna click a little bit off to the side, uh, draw across. You can see I've got some green on the top here. I don't want that, so I'm gonna move that up and we want to make our uh, circle big enough so it's a decent landing pad but not so big uh, so that the game is overly easy. So something like that should do. Uh, go ahead and draw your circle. That's the only edit we need to do so let's go back to coding by clicking on the code tab. 
Before we code though, we're going to add one more sprite. So I want you to go back to the uh, little sprite, choose a sprite icon, uh, go to the magnifying glass and click on that. This time we're going to type rocket ship. R -O yep, don't even have to type the whole thing and you see there's only one, so go ahead and click on that. Now we have all our elements. So out of the two sprites, the first one I want to code is the Earth. So click on Earth, please. So this is how I'm going to challenge you in this tutorial. I am going to make code blocks just appear here. These are the code blocks you're going to need to find. I'm not going to tell you which category they're in, though the color they are certainly gives you a hint. And I'm not going to tell you where they are when the blocks appear. It'll be your job to find them and put them into place as I've shown you. So, this is your first code block, the when flag click block. It starts code when this green flag is clicked, so anything under it will run when someone hits the green flag. Go ahead and find the category and the block and place it in the coding area. So, I hope you found this when flag click block. Um, if you're having any trouble finding blocks anywhere in this tutorial, remember just to ask your instructor for help. The next block I want you to find is this set size block. What I want you to do when you find it is attach it to the bottom of the one flag quick block and change the value in size of it, inside of it I should say, to 150%. Believe it or not, with just two lines, we've got enough code to actually test something. So I want you to watch the size of the earth and go ahead and click on the green flag here. Do that now. So what you should have seen is that our earth grew bigger and that's because we set the size to 150%. Now this code is actually gonna be useful in our rocket ship. So even though we're gonna be working on our rocket ship later, what I want you to do now is grab this code by putting a cursor over it pressing down with the left mouse click and hold it down so you can drag it above the rocket ship and let go. This will actually put the code into the rocket ship as well as snap the original code back here for the Earth. Do that please. Okay, so the next code I'm going to tell you a little bit about is this one. It's the repeat until block. The repeat until block is a loop like the forever loop or repeat loop, but it'll loop until a certain condition is met. So I want you to find that one in its category and then attach it just to the bottom of the code we have so far. All right, so the next code we'll be looking at is this one right here. Uh, when touching. The touching sensing uh, code block is actually hexagonal shaped which fits into all the condition elements. You see how that pointed ends and the hexagonal shape fits right into this repeat until loop. So this is the code block I want you to find and once you found it put it in the repeat until loop right where I did and change the value inside of it to rocket ship. Do that please. As you put code together, you should be trying to read the combined code and see if you understand what it's going to try and do. This one seems pretty obvious. It's going to repeat until touching rocket ship, whatever we put in here. So what we're going to put in there is this, a turn code block. So find the category you believe this is in and find the block. Put it in here, but change the 15 degrees to 4. All right, so if you've been keeping up, uh, you should have some code we can test again. So if your rocket ship is touching the Earth and you hit start, nothing's going to happen. But if your rocket ship is not touching the Earth and you hit start, then your Earth should rotate because that's exactly what our code said. Now, one thing you should watch is when you move that rocket ship, you're going to switch to the rocket ship sprite. So click on the Earth sprite again and look how the code represents exactly what we said. It's going to set the size to 150, then it's going to repeat turning the Earth until it touches the rocket ship. So if we move this over, touch the rocket ship, the Earth starts. Just be careful to click on Earth and move it back into that sprite before you go on to the next video slide. I want to take a second and test a previously learned skill. So the previously learned skill is duplication. I want you to duplicate this entire code block here. Okay, hopefully nobody had any trouble with that. Duplication, fairly easy. It's a right click on the top of the code block you want to duplicate, and then you just select duplicate. Uh, the duplicated code will stick to your mouse pointer until you click on some empty white space 
and then it'll drop down. So if you haven't done that already, go ahead and do it now. Now I want you to strip this duplicated code of this set size to 150 block and also of this turn 4 degree block. See if you can remember how to do that. Okay, so the thing to remember about stripping code is you want to do it from the bottom up. So in the case of this thing that's inside the repeat until loop, it can just pull out and be thrown away to the left there. But to get rid of the set size, if you took it off from there, it wouldn't be, you'd have to throw everything out. So you want to strip it out from the bottom, then take away your set size, and then put it together. This is what you should end up with left. So if you haven't got there already, do it now. So we're going to import some sounds, so I want you to go up here and click on the sound tab please. The sound category has a button at the bottom of it that is awfully a lot like the sprite and background buttons where you can choose a sound using the magnifying glass icon, so click on that. Here you can see there's a lot of built-in sounds. I want to find the one we're looking for by having you type D-U-B-S-T-E-P, dubstep, so do that please. Go ahead and click on dubstep. So there's a neat little editor we'll play with a long time from now, uh, but for right now I just want you to go back to your code, so click on that. So now we'll go back to our little game of where I show you blocks and you find them. And the block I want you to find is this one. Play sound dubstep until done, and I want you to put that inside this repeat until loop. Let's practice reading our code. You should be able to read your code well enough that you know what it's going to do before you even run it. So at the click of the green flag, we're going to set the size of our earth to 50% bigger than it already was, so 150%, and then we'll repeat until we're touching the rocket ship a little bit of a turn. So that'll just continuously turn our earth around. Also, starting at the same time, the green flag. Uh, we're going to repeat under the same condition till we're touching the rocket ship the playing of a sound. So we should just end up with a spinning earth and a back, some background music. You can go ahead and test this by clicking the green flag. Just make sure your rocket ship is not touching the earth. Okay, that's it for our earth. So now I just want you to click on the rocket ship and we'll start coding that one. Do you remember this code? We transferred it in earlier. It was the initial code that started our Earth, and we borrowed it. I just want you to make one change. Change this 150 to 25%. The next code block I want you to find and put on is this one. It's the show code block. The show code block is going to take a, a rocket character and make sure it's always visible at the beginning of the script. Um, that's because somewhere in the script later on we might be hiding it. So we want to make sure it shows when the script starts again. So go ahead and find that in its category and place it here. We also want to make sure that the rocket ship is starting in the same position when we start the script. So the code block I want you to find for that is this one. It's the go to block and it goes to a specific X and Y coordinate. See if you can find that now and place it under the show block. So when you put the go to block in here, it's going to have some initial numbers. These numbers are just the X and Y coordinate of this rocket. So the X coordinate in combination with this Y coordinate is what puts the rocket right there. Let's focus on this Y coordinate. We want a Y coordinate that's going to put this rocket right at the top of the screen. So Y values go up and down. The highest Y value is 180 and it's the top of the screen. The lowest Y value is negative 180 and because uh, the middle of that's going to be zero our middle value is zero. It goes positive numbers as we go this way and it goes negative numbers as we go this way. Not the best directional aerial but you get the idea. So what I want you to do is to move that to the top of the screen Let's put 180 in there. Okay, let's talk about the uh, x-coordinate. So basically, we want to share the same x-coordinate as the Earth. So x measures left to right. The center of the Earth is going to have this x-coordinate, whatever it is right here. And we want to give the same x-coordinate to our rocket ship. So uh, there is a block for that, and it looks like this. So that is the block I want you to find. So right now, what it says doesn't make any sense for what we're doing, but 
find this block the way it's written and uh, I'll show you how to change it. If you need any help, feel free to ask your instructor. Uh, he can help point it out for you. Okay, hopefully you found that without your instructor's help. Uh, this has a couple ways it can be changed. So right now, its default setting is for stage, but you can drop this down and it'll show you a list of sprites you can use as well. So we're gonna use the Earth Sprite. And then you can see we could choose to get the X position of the Earth, the Y position of the Earth, the direction of the Earth, the costume number of the Earth, a whole bunch of different variables for the Earth. But we do like X position, we'll click on that and put it right in here. That way we're gonna go to the X position of the Earth and Y180. So do that please. Okay, so this code is testable. You can click on it and you'll see that our rocket ship uh, shoots up to the very top right above the Earth. What's the next block you would need to find? Well, it's this one. It's a forever loop. You should be pretty familiar with that. Uh, go ahead and find it and stick it on right below this go to block. So the forever loop doesn't need much explanation anymore. I want to go right to the next block I'm gonna have you find, and that is this point towards block. And once you find it, I want you to click on this down arrow and change it to earth. So you're gonna find point towards mouth pointer and then change it into point towards earth. Do that please. So this code block, I was going to put it here, but there's really no need to do that forever. Once you're pointed towards something, you're pointed towards it. So let's go ahead and put it there before the forever loop. Now when you run this code, something weird's going to happen. Point towards Earth is actually going to make your character point this way. And as you can see, it's pointed at a 90 degree angle away from Earth. So let's go and click on the costume tab to see if we can fix that. So click on costumes now. So let me tell you something about Scratch and Snap. They can't really see this as nothing but pixels, so they don't know what the front is, so they make an assumption. They assume that the front of everything, every drawing that ever gets presented to it, is facing this way. So it thinks that if it takes this fin here and points it towards the Earth, that it must be the front facing the Earth. But that's not the case, so we have to change our uh, ship uh, direction so that it makes sense for what we're doing. So for what we're doing, we're going to click on select here and circle our ship so that we get this little turning thing. So do that first. Now I want you to turn the ship by putting your cursor on top of this little uh, bar with the two arrows on top of it and turn your ship so that it's facing this way. So do that please. Now, remember what I said, as far as Scratch is concerned, everything's facing this way. So when we, in our game, say face the Earth, it's going to put it down like it's landing, and that's exactly what we want. So once you're done here, go ahead and click on Code so we can return to coding our game. Okay, so here's the next code block I want you to find. It is the Move code block. It has 10 steps in it. Once you find it, I want you to put it in here, and I want you to change that to just one step. So go ahead, do that. You can go ahead and test this code out, and you'll find that your rocket ship starts descending and just keeps descending. Uh, so we need to find or uh, write a little bit of more code that is going to give us some rocket fuel so we can actually control our descent. So I want you to go ahead and find this code block right here. Another one flight click block. And under this one flight quick block, we want the computer to always be watching for somebody hitting the space bar uh, so that when they hit the space bar, we, give, we move in the opposite direction. We give ourselves a little rocket fuel. Uh, so to be always be looking, we need a code block like this. We need another forever loop. So why don't you find that and stick that on the bottom of the green flag. Okay, so we are now going to be looking for this condition where uh, the space bar is pressed. So whenever something is conditional, there's usually this code block that you need. It's the if code block. So why don't you see if you can find that one, and when you do, put it right in there. All right, so now we got an if block looking for a condition. Can you remember what the condition was we want to look for? So if you said space key pressed, then you're right, and there actually is a code block for that. So why don't you find that code block and put it right there. Okay, so now we got an if condition, uh, we've got something to react to when the space bar is pressed, and then what are we gonna do when those conditions are met? 
Well, we're going to move. So I'm going to have you find the move block, put it there, but we're not going to move the same direction. We're not going to move in a positive direction to where we're falling. We're going to go opposite. So here I'm going to have you use negative 5 because if you want to move the opposite direction without changing the direction you're pointed, you just use a negative number to back up. So let's go ahead and test our code. So we've got a spaceship. Let's hit the green flag. It descends uh, towards the Earth. And if it looks like we're going to hit the Earth before we hit our landing pad, we can hit the space bar and adjust uh, just where we're going to land. We can try and make sure that we land on that red dot. But right now, it doesn't really detect for success or failure. So why don't we do that next? Okay, so I want you to turn your attention to this bit of co code right here. Inside here, we're falling. This is our forever loop where we're falling towards the Earth. And one of two things are going to happen. We're either going to hit our landing spot or not. So either a lot of good things are going to happen or a lot of bad things are going to happen. And whenever we have code like that, what we want is this if-else statement. So I want you to find the if-else statement, and I want you to put it in right underneath this move one step. So now we got this if else statement in here and we're testing for a condition of landing on the landing spot. Well there was a, a reason we made that landing spot red um, and that was so we could use this block right here. Touching color. So find that one please. And when you do find it just put it right in there. So the touching color block does not come with the color we want inside it. We have to click that color that is inside of it and then there is this little icon at the bottom with an ink dropper. Click on that and then you can just go over to the color you want and click on it and you should see the touching color turn to the color you want. So do those steps and if you don't get the color you want make sure you call your instructor over for a little help. Okay so if we touch the red then either something good is going to happen or else something bad is going to happen. And for each of those, we're going to have a sound. So right now I'm going to take you on a bit of a, a tour to shop for some sounds. So click on the sound tab. When you're looking for new sounds, most likely the places you're going to go is this button on the bottom and then click on a search. Here, first I want you to search the word boom, B-O-O-M. And you'll find this uh, one sound called boom cloud. We want that, so click on that. We're going to repeat this one more time to get another sound. So click on the little icon here for sounds and then click on or hover above this icon and then click on this icon, choose a sound. This time I want you to search for the sound coin, C-O-I-N. And when you find it, go ahead and click on that. Now that we've got our two new sounds, go ahead and click back on the code tab. Okay, let's start finishing this code. Uh, so like we said, if we do touch the landing gear, the red spot, good things are going to happen, or else bad things are going to happen. Let's tackle some of the bad first. The first bad thing I want you to get in there is play an ominous noise. So that's where we got this code block. Play sound boom cloud. Go to uh, the category you think this is in, make the change you think is necessary to it, and then put it in here so it says play sound boom cloud until done. After we play that terrible sound, we want to add this code in so that our ship disappears. So find the hide block and put it in next. And finally, because we, we lost, we died, we want the game to stop running uh, and the script to stop. So put in this block right here. So you have to find it in its proper category. Uh, once you find it, put it right there. All right, so that takes care of the bad things that might happen. So in this space, we want the good things that'll happen. And the first good thing we're going to do is increase our score. But to do that, we need a score variable. So I want you to make a score variable. And then after you've made it, grab this block, set score to zero, and put it right underneath one of the two when flag quick blocks. Doesn't matter which one. Are you having trouble with this one? Well, if you are, then remember, under variables, you have to make your variable first. So that's the only hint I'm going to give you. Now, go ahead and see if you can do it yourself, or call your instructor over for a little help. 
Now to make our scoring a little funner, instead of just giving us all our score points all at once, we're going to let the player watch it add up as it makes a bunch of noise. And the first code block we're going to use to do that is this one, this repeat 10 block. Find that under its proper category and put it right there. Okay, so for our next code block, we're going to turn our attention back to the score element. So the score is initially zero, so we need something that will change the score. And this is the code block for that. Change score by. So find this code block and put it right in here. And after you've got it in there, change the score not by one, but by a hundred. So make those changes, please. Okay, so you've done a great job. You got yourself a change score by 100, but there's no score here visible anywhere in the display. That's because when you go into the variable section, you can create a variable, but you have to check this box right here to make it visible. So go ahead and check that box. Now one thing you'll notice about games is they use sounds to make things more exciting. So the fact that this is giving us 100 points 10 times over is exciting all right, but it'd be even more exciting if it made a little noise every time it did so. So to do that, I want you to introduce this block into this code. So go to the right category to find this block, change whatever it says inside to say coin. It might say coin already, and just put it in right under change score by 100. So some of you might have gone off script and tested your code, and you would have noticed that it's not working right. When our spaceship is up here, it's not touching the red, so we're automatically triggering these commands. It hides, it plays the boom sound, and uh, we stop all. So in order to fix this, we need to make sure that we don't exercise any of these conditions until we're actually touching the earth. So to make sure, and that's just another condition. So what I want you to do is find an if block, just like this, and I want you to take these blocks and put them inside it, and then put that back under the move block. So basically what we're saying is this, if this guy has made it to Earth, then check to see if it's hit the landing space or not. So how do we check if we've made it to Earth? Well, you're going to need one of these blocks. And you're going to need to change the mouse pointer to say Earth. So find this block in its category, make this change so it touch, reads touching Earth, and then we get if touching Earth, then we can check to see if we've hit the landing spot, or else we can decide that we've crashed. So make those changes, please. Now this logic works really good. We can touch the Earth, and then we can see if we're touching the color. Unfortunately, because there's a little square box around this that you can't see, it is possible to touch the earth before we're touching our red color. So we're going to add this in. Another move. Um, it doesn't have to be the full 10. You can see I've changed this to 5. So we're just going to immediately, after we touch the earth, move 5 more steps to put us closer to that color that we're touching and we can see if it's the right red color. So go ahead and put that move five step block in immediately after the we've checked to see if we're touching the earth. And finally, I'm not gonna make you find this one because it's right here. I'm just gonna have you right click and duplicate this stop all and put it right at the end because after we get all our points, we wanna stop the game as well, just like we did when we didn't hit the target. Now before we call our game finished, let's do one bit of cleanup with our costume. So go ahead and click on the costume tab. So when you click on the costume tab, you're going to notice that you have actually more than one costume here. You actually have five, but we've only changed the first one to be pointing in the direction we want it to. So that's what I want you to do here is change all these other costumes, use the first selection arrow, circle them, and use the bar with the arrows uh, on either side to rotate them all so they're pointing the direction we want them to be pointing. And if you hold down the shift key as you turn these, you'll notice that they uh, will rotate in 15 degree in increments, uh, making it pretty easy uh, to turn them to the left hand side. It's just one, two ticks and they're left. So that's what I want you to do in this step, is just take all of these ships and turn them so they're all facing the same direction. 
Okay, so after you've moved all these ships and rotated them, we've actually kind of put them in a, in a different orientation compared to what they were, and we need to line them up so that they're all kind of in the same spot. Now, there is a very difficult to say, see, uh, gray little crossbar in the screen. You can kind of see I'm pointing to it here. If you can't see it well in the video, get your instructor to help you find it. What I want you to do now is take each one of these uh, things and just put the nose of the plane right on that cross. So here I'll do it with the other one. And you can see the little cross is there and I'm putting the nose of the plane on it. Um, and do that with each one of the rockets so that they all are kind of orientated in the same place in space um, because we're using that as a common reference point. So do that for all five ships. So now that you've got all of these costumes um, all orientated the same way, there's two ways you could use them. You might decide with, that this is simply the best picture, the best ship picture, and I want to use that one. So you could uh, select it and save your game that way, and that would be the ship you use. The other way you could use it is you could change your code by adding this element in. See this next costume block? You can add the next costume block either above or below this move block. And then when you run your game, your ship will be animated. So go ahead, try, decide what you want to do, and play your game. See if you can land on the red landing space, and when you do, see how many points you get. So go ahead, try it out, have some fun. For those of you who have time for an extra challenge, see how much of this you can recreate in the Snap programming environment. Uh, don't forget to ask your instructor for a little help with the graphics because you'll have to go uh, to different areas for graphics and Snap, but we can help you out. Okay, thanks for doing this tutorial. See you at the next one.